Well, a very good uh, Wednesday evening to you all. Thank you so much for joining me on this. Again, it's a very wet evening. Every single Wednesday when I seem to do a Facebook Live, it always turns to rain. So I'm going to take my glasses off because uh, for those of you who have seen any of my lives before, I'm completely short-sighted and I can't see my phone if I have my glasses on. Right, so let's see who's in the house. Then we'll get on to the important stuff and that's crafting. Right, we've got um, Sharon. Sharon is in the house. Hello there, Sharon. We've got uh, Louisa. Hi there. We've got um, Carol. Um, we have Sue. We have Sam. Sam has actually helped uh, in this particular life. That will all become apparent a little bit later. We also have um, Sue. Um, so yeah, we've got, a, we've got a few people on board. So I'm gonna put my glasses um, back on and just explain that um, today's live will all be about um, uh, products from um, That's Crafty. don't know if you've ever been to um, That's Crafty's store before, but it's a really great store. And believe me, the prices are quite competitive when you compare them to other sites. So go over there and have a look and you will be amazed, especially for um, some of the Stamperia products. So head on over there if you love that. But today we're going to be using products from the ITD collection, which is a Polish company. And also a little bit later on in the live, I will give you, I'll be giving you um, a link so you can download some free backing papers that you can be using in in your own um, craft projects so if you do download them I would absolutely love to see what you make with them let's just see who else on board just take my glasses off again we have um, Susan we have Fiona hi there Fiona Jan Jan hi hi my webinar got cancelled so I'm here well <laughs> What can I say? I was second choice. No, uh, you're very, very welcome, um, Jan. We've also got uh, Janet. Hi there, Janet. We've got Joan, got Sarah, Lou. Yeah, we're all in the house. All the good people are in the crafting house. Did I mention, let's see. Oh, we've got Liz. Hi there, Liz. Glad you could join us as well. So, right, we're all here. Um, like I say, I'm going to be using stuff from That's Crafty. I'm going to pop my phone up there so I can hopefully... Uh, be reading some of your comments as we go. Right, so what have I got in store today? Right, let's take a look at my craft desk. Oh, yeah, there's lots going on where the craft desk is concerned. So I've got some beautiful rice papers from ITD. We've got some scrap bits of card and we've got loads of Prima moulds. Like I say, all available from That's Crafty. So what I'm going to be doing is um, creating a little mixed media canvas using some of the MDF products, um, some of um, That's Crafty's paints. We have got this beautiful product here. And if you've never, ever used that, that is the, um, the Crackle Glaze. Really worth getting your hands on that one. That is a phenomenal product because it does actually work. Right. So I'm going to put us on um, full desktop um, camera. OK and we're going to get crafting so first of all i'm going to just um show you these molds to start with these are the, some of the ones i'm going to be using now if you've never ever crafted with molds before don't ever be put off that's what i always say i'm going to be using the good old um, hearty clay okay and this is one i pre-colored so i've wrapped it again in cling film i'm just going to scroll up there we have lots of people who are actually um, in so as you can see okay so what I'm going to cast let me just have a look so like I've got loads of different molds that I've used in this particular um, project I'm going to go down here to this very last one so these are the ones I'm going to be using uh, the keys we've then got the Avery I do believe this one is called which is the birds and the beautiful branches there we have also got on top of that we've got these I absolutely love these because you don't have to use them in their entirety um, he says looking for something to show you here we go this is the one here this is a beautiful little frame but you can see it's actually from this one here so basically I just cast the clay just in the outer part there okay so that one fits perfectly in there so you like I say, you don't have to use them all in their entirety. So we've got that one. We've also got the uh, the cogs. Absolutely fantastic one there from Finnebear Stroke um, Prima. 
we've got the beautiful wings. These always remind me of Egyptian wings and because of that beautiful texture that's in there, just a little bit of gilding wax over the top and hey presto, you have got a beautiful cast there and bring out all the detail. I'm gonna pop these on the floor. So if you, if you hear anything drop, then that's what it is. Right, so if you've never ever used a mold before, okay, you just need a little bit of corn flour or corn starch. You can be using um, a little bit of lip balm in there as well. I'm just gonna quickly pop that in there. I have got a brush somewhere. Okay, so the idea is just to pop it in there. And that basically just helps, okay, just dry out um, if there's any damp parts in the mold. The most important thing of all, okay, is to actually tap out that mold because if you don't tap it out, okay, what can happen is that if there's any clumps of the um, corn flour in there, then it will sort of like then transfer into your mold, if that makes sense. Just give that a good old whack, okay, and then I have already mixed up some clay, okay, which is here, and then quite simply just push that in. Now, if you've never ever used um, air drying clay before, okay, I do have tips on my YouTube channel. I'll give you um, details of that in a moment, but you just need to make sure that basically the clay is not too damp. If it's too damp, then it is going to stick inside of your mold. So I'm just gonna press that in, okay. So I do apologize if um, I'm not reading out too many of your comments, because this is actually the first sort of like live where, believe it or not, I've actually crafted. How, how, how uncrafty is that? But I always like to give people as much information as at all possible, where products are concerned. So you've all got a really good understanding because, you know, I've been there when um, I've looked at certain things and thought, how on earth are you going to use that? So I always like to just give as much information out as possible. Right, I'm going to just pop that back in there. Okay, and again, this is just clean film, so I'm just going to wrap that up. Then halfway, I'm just going to then pop the sides in like that and just roll it like so. Pop the whole lot. I put it back in the foil bag just so I know it's hearty clay. And then... The good old Ziploc bags, they come in really, really handy, okay? Now, I do believe that um, That's Crafty are getting a stock of hearty clay. So, like I say, please pop over there and um, you'll see all of the products that I'm using, okay? Can't say that all of the moulds going to be available because uh, Prima do have loads of moulds. So, once I've uh, tucked the clay back inside... Oh, we've got... Um, hi there, Karen. Karen has jumped in hello nice to see you we've got christine is waving or should i wave to her there we go way back and we've got sue hi there sue glad you could all join us right so all of the clay is in the mold and then it is just a simple case of just flexing and as long as you've got the clay just right so it's not too damp then even on a little bit of an intricate design like that okay you're going to get the most amazing casts really really quickly okay so the idea then is just to let that dry on a piece of kitchen cloth. That will just help absorb all of the moisture. And with a bit of luck, that should dry um, overnight. That's how I normally do mine. Now, I've got a beautiful um, backing paper, okay, that I've already stuck on to a sheet of card. You don't need to see me uh, do that. Now, those of you who have followed me for all of those years are probably wondering how I've still got all my fingers left after all these years because... Everyone used to know me as the, um, the, the crafting ninja because I was really, really good where it come to um, using a craft knife. Reason being, I've used a craft knife, or in this, in this case, it's actually um, the sort of knife that a, a, a surgeon would use. Okay, and I'm just running that along there. Okay, and just don't try to cut in one go. That's what I always say. And I'm sure some of you have noticed that I have a glass mat, I have a cutting mat. Do you know what? Glass mats, I find, actually blunt blades a lot quicker. So that's why if I'm doing any cutting, I bring in a craft mat. Okay, so just pop that in like so. Hello there, Janice. We've got Janice joining us um, this evening as well. Goodness me, everyone's, everyone's in the house tonight. So I'm just going to keep on just trim, trim, trim like so. Okay, if any bits get stuck, then obviously you can go back in there and just cut those out a little bit more right this is our backing paper that we have 
Okay, so it's a, it's a real nice one um, from the ITD collection. Um, I do believe on the bottom of these ones, these are available from That's Crafty, that's all the W's, um, that's crafty.co.uk. It's actually got little words down the bottom there, so you can trim those out and use those separately if you should so wish. Right, just popping that aside. Okay, so I'm going to get lots of things together and then we're going to like go back. Like I say, I don't actually uh, do much uh, crafting live as such. I always like to prepare things. So this has really put me uh, in the hot seat. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that aside one moment and no doubt I'm going to forget where it was as well. Right, so if you've never used rice paper before, okay, the one thing I would say is it's an absolutely amazing product to be using, okay. So it can wrap around virtually anything. It's very strong, um, but yet it's very, very thin. Now, if I was to stick this directly onto this piece of MDF here, okay, it would actually um, appear quite uh, dark, the actual image. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use some gesso. So this is, that's Crafty's gesso, okay. So just quickly go over that. It's up to you whether you put uh, one or two coats. I find one is normally enough. Okay, so just go around there, um, like so, so, bump, 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 like so, okay, and then when you're happy, that's not going to take too long to dry, I've got my heat tool here, so let's just give that a little bit of a blast, okay, and just pop the lid back on there. Now, that's crafty, actually do black and um, white gesso. And I really, really love their gesso because it's actually quite um, a, a good um, thickness. It's not too thick, not too thin, and it goes on really, really well. Okay, so just pop that on like so. Everyone's saying hello to everyone. Everyone is just so good in this group. Uh, Margaret's joined us. Hi there, Margaret. Alison has also joined us. Jan's still here. You know, I was second best for Jan tonight, but there we go. I, I won't say it again, Jan, but there we go. Uh, <laughs> So let's just have a look. Okay, right. So once that's actually dry, then we just use some decoupage glue. Now you can use PVA glue. Um, the great thing about um, this particular um, brand of decoupage glue is that it does give you a little bit of movement. Some PVA glues, okay, so even the one, dare I say, from That's Crafty is quite a quick grab, so you don't really want to be using anything like that. Okay, so what I tend to do, I actually apply the glue to the surface that I want to stick my piece of rice paper to. Okay, like so. And just give that a really good coating. Okay, and we've got Angela who's also here. So welcome to you as well, Angela. Right, so now we're just going to pop our little rabbit on the top then. You can see it's quite transparent, so you can see where it's going to sit. And now is the time you can go back in there and just budge it down a little bit. There we go, like so. And then just press that down. Okay, now ideally what I'd do, I would actually let that dry, okay, before you then go in there and cut that off. So obviously we are a little bit short for time, okay, so I'm going to try to keep it relatively i say relatively quick tonight but um who who knows um hi there ian we've also got valerie joining us as well so let's just quickly go around with a craft knife now you can use um sandpaper as well just around the edge there to give you a nice clean finish it's just that i've got this to hand and that's going to do me okay right so let's just go all the way around this So, okay, always bring the knife towards you, not too much pressure. So there we go, there is our little um, rabbit there. Okay, I think I just, I have oh, like, taken the, the very edge off there. It doesn't really matter because what I'm going to do is basically go round that afterwards with something else. Okay, so let's just coat this. So the second coat is actually just making sure that you really seal that image in. So the idea is not to put too much paint actually on as you go, because otherwise, if you do that, then the actual rice paper can become very, very um, mushy, and then, yeah, it doesn't really work. 
what what a cute fella that rabbit is isn't he just isn't he just fiona we've also got a master on hi there master good evening to you glad you could join us so there's our little rabbit i'm again going to pop that on the side actually i'm going to throw it on the floor because i'm trying to do um lots of different techniques this evening right so let's just get rid of the decoupage glue i'm going to pop that back up there and we're just going to use some of these these are fantastic these are chipboards from um, that's crafting okay and what i'm going to do i'm just going to take out one of them you get loads of elements as you can see these ones are obviously all of the cogs um, and i'm just going to pop this one here okay and then what we're going to do get rid of the cutting mat for the moment we're then going to use this product here so again, I'm not sure if anyone's actually used this before, but it's the texture paste from That's Crafty. It's a really good paste. It's going to go through stencils. It's also going to give you texture. Okay, so let's just pop this on. And I'm just going to use um, a brush to apply this. You can use a palette knife, entirely up to you. That's, that's, that's um, my note to tell us all that Sam is actually going to be live on Friday at 6 p.m. Oh, there we go. There's, there's a big... Um, Name drop for you there, Sam, but um, I'll let everyone know a little bit later on as well. So let's just pop that, okay. And I'm just pouncing, okay, the brush just over the cog, okay, like so. Cogs or gears, depends where you're from. I know that Americans tend to call them gears, but over here, I think we call them cogs, but you all know what it is. Okay, so just going to go around there. Now you can force dry the texture paste. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's just, uh, um, yeah, he is from the ITD collection. Yes, he is indeed uh, Marcia because uh, Marcia's also used um, this or, or some of the little rabbit characters um, from the ITD collection in some swap ATC swaps that she did. I saw online and she used um, some crackle texture i do believe from stamperia on that so there we go okay just keep on pouncing that brush you may want to go back a little bit later and it's actually quite difficult to see there you go that's the texture just there so just keep on going around yep indeed cogs indeed uh, <laughs> says ian so leave that one to dry it shouldn't take too long to be honest with you um, it's pretty quick but you can force dry it if you should wish Right now, what I've also done, so there's going to be lots of painting uh, this evening. Um, I'm just going to get this beautiful colour here. This is the multi-surface paints from That's Crafty. Okay, now, pff, this paint is phenomenal. It really, really is. Um, it will not only work on MDF, which this one is, and this is a, a product from That's Crafty, but it's going to work um, on your papers, your cardboards, but it will also work on fabric, okay? Uh, so you can have fun with that. So just says give it a good shake, which I didn't do. So let's just go back and give it a shake. Let's see. The smaller images are the perfect size for ATCs. They are, they are indeed. Hello there, Jill. We've got Jill. Jill's, Jill's definitely in love with the rabbits. I know that, yep. So again, I'm just gonna you probably all notice I'm using the same paintbrush <laughs> out of the whole thing. Right, okay, so I'm just going to go round <clears throat> the outside of this one. And you don't have to go round the outside. I am because I'm doing something different on the centrepiece. But all will become apparent in a while. So just going to go around there. This paint is pretty quick, again, to actually dry with a heat tool. Okay, so... I'm not looking for perfection, but obviously, if you're at home, you're going to be taking your time a little bit more than I am. This is sort of like a little bit of speed crafting. <clears throat> now, we'll have to keep on clearing my throat. I'm suffering from a little bit of a cold at the moment. But as I say, the show must go on. So there we go. This is a beautiful color. This is called Ocean. It's like um, a turquoise color. It works particularly well, in actual fact, if you're going to be using like a verdigris type of effect. Just add a little bit of black to it and you've like got that perfect uh, colour. Okay, so just go all the way along like so. Okay, 
so I'm not going to make it that it's perfect. I'm going to get the heat tool again, which is going to dry that off. Will it work? Let's have a look. Um, on veg, veg tan leather. Do you know, I honestly don't know if it'd work on leather. <clears throat> it would definitely work on um, fabric, um, as in cotton. That's, but um, Jill's saying it should do. So that's, the, yeah. Jill's been using um, That's Crafty's products for a lot longer than I have, so she's maybe actually tried it. But it's always worth just having a little go. Like I say, these are really good paints anyway. And they, you know, work on multiple surfaces. I do believe, um, Jill, please correct me if I'm wrong, but do they also work on glass if you just go directly onto glass? I'm pretty sure they do. Laura's here. Sorry I'm late to the party. We'll let you off, but just this time, Laura. Uh, so let's just go round like so. So this particular um, product that I'm actually doing is like uh, a faux canvas, okay? So you can pick these up from That's Crafting. Okay, let's just go round there. Okay, right, so just to pop that aside for the moment, I'm just gonna quickly um, clean my brush, okay? go okay now the next product we're going to be using whoops that wasn't meant to go on there is this one here okay so this is the crackle um, glaze that I was explaining to you about earlier and this will give you um, a nice like cracked effect so the idea of this one is to give it a really good mix to start with okay so I do mean a really good mix okay I'm just using a um, a little palette knife sort of thing or a little stirrer here okay make sure you use something metal don't use um, anything that's um, too thin because it's quite actually a thick I say paint but it's like a glaze okay but if it's something plastic you may well snap it actually in there so there we go just make sure we clean that one okay and then we're just going to apply it to here I'm not going to apply it over the whole lot because I don't need it over the whole lot. Okay, so that's about there. So I'm just going to quickly grab. I, I, do you know what? What are we? What are we all like uh, for crafters? We never ever have a pencil around, do we? So let's just pop that. Okay, sort of like there. That's going to cover that side. And it's right there for that side. Okay, that's enough. Right. So I'm just going to apply this. You always let, I know, I didn't like to say, Laura, I didn't like to say. So I'm just going to quickly apply this. Okay, it's a little bit like treacle, I'll be honest with you, when you apply it. And you're probably thinking to yourself, goodness me, this, this is, you know, like really, really sticky. And it doesn't matter where I've got those streaks, that's because purely, purely I didn't clean my brush too well. I do have a tendency when I'm crafting on my own, I just like tend to stick to one brush. It's, I've, I've got loads, <laughs> so I've got no reason to stick to one brush, but I'm sure we all have our strange crafting ways. Okay, so let's just go around that, and then also just on to there. Okay, we've got lots of other people joining us. We've got Mary, Mary who's joined us. Um, we've got Judith as well, so all very, very welcome. Hello. So just going around there. And just spread it as sort of like evenly as you possibly can. Okay. And then I'll explain the trick of actually using this particular crackle glaze. So you'll notice that on the actual piece of MDF, I have already put down some gesso paint. It could be any colour paint. You basically want contrasting ones. So the idea is that when this lot cracks, you will then see um, the colour underneath. So if you're using the same colour underneath, yes, it's going to crack, but you're not going to see any of those cracks. So really, there's not much point in doing it. Right, so I'm just going to go with a heat tool, okay, like so. And I am actually going to use a different brush just to prove that I do actually have more than one brush. Okay, so just go round with that. Okay. I like the effect that, that you've created. What's that, the... the, the um, the streaky bits that weren't meant to be there is, is quite good, yeah. 
I said, it must be the effect that you've created. What's that? Oh, I, I, do you know, I don't even know if you're talking about me. Hi there, Tom has joined us. Hello there, Tom. Glad you could join us. So just keep on going over. Okay, and I'm just drying that glaze. You will see when it has gone dry. I don't know if we can actually pick that up, but you can see it's all like, it looks like it's drying streaky, but it's actually not. That's actually um, where the paint is, or the paint, or should I say the glaze is still a little bit wet. Good morning from Melbourne, never, Australia here. Wow, it's 6.30 in the morning. Well, a very good morning to you, um, Bernie. It's a Thursday. Goodness me. Well, I'm, I'm just very, very honoured that you've got up and that was the first thing you did. You switched on. You see, I have lots uh, of the same favourite brushes everywhere. Yeah, that's the thing, Sam. They are everywhere and you can never, ever find them. But you know what? That's, that's what us crafters do. So we're nearly dry. And that's what is really good. There's lots of um, crackle glazes on the market where you actually have to let them dry naturally, okay? And it can take so like overnight, but this one you can actually force dry. You will notice that I'm not um, putting the heat tool too close to the actual um, product. Otherwise it will bubble. So just do bear that in mind, okay? And we are getting there. Now, let's just keep on going. I know it's a little bit, a little bit like watching paint dry, so I do apologize, okay? But seriously, the effect is pretty good. You can, let's have a look. Yeah, that's still pretty wet just there. Okay, so I do apologize that we're all just watching, um, well, we're not even watching anything dry because it's transparent. But you, you'll, you'll, you'll get the idea once it is dry. But just make sure it is dry beforehand, okay? The idea is that you've got to just make sure that it's just a little bit tacky, okay? Then you can apply your second coat or your second colour, and then it should be okay. Literally watch and paint dry. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. I knew I could count on you. Um, we've got Celia here. And Celia, I do believe, is she from, are you from Mexico? Not too sure. I found 20 new brushes the other day looking for something else. <laughs> I know the feeling, Ian. I know that it's a bit like mould, isn't it? You can never, ever find the correct mould either. Oh dear. Right, OK. That should be enough. Right, we're quickly going to go on now and we're going to apply the colour, OK? So we're just going to go. Now, you will notice what I'm going to do. I'm going to dip the brush a lot of times. The idea is not to go over the same bit too many times. Obviously, we've got that um, patterning bit there, okay? And also what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn it around, I'm gonna go the opposite way as well, okay? Now, it's like all crackle paints, it's a case of if you apply it really thickly, okay, you're gonna get really wide cracks, and the finer or the thinner um, you, uh, a coat of paint, and the finer the cracks, and you can see already it is cracking. So um, I must have done a cracking job. <sighs> Excuse the puns and the, the really bad jokes, but there we go. So there we go. That is doing exactly what it should. And you can see how quick and how easy it is to uh, um, apply a crackle finish to your projects. Okay, so you can see I'm just going over near enough once or twice. Okay, I'm trying not to go over the same area too much. And the reason I'm going in different directions, it will then give a more random effect on the crackle. Okay, so there we go, like so. Okay, right, so let's plonk that brush over there. And you can see there already that cracking is coming along really nicely. Everyone's saying they've got a few brushes somewhere. I know we're, we're all exactly the same as crafters, without a doubt. So let's just make sure I'm going to clean uh, the brush. And obviously the one you used with the, um, the crackle glaze, yeah, make sure that one is really clean as well because that is quite a sticky um, product in its own right. Okay. Right, I'm going to pop that aside for the moment to crack away but as you can see that's worked um, exactly as we wanted hello there Belinda Belinda's joined us uh, Belinda joined uh, myself and um, a friend 
oh, a couple of years ago now, um, when we did a a workshop down um, near Reading, I do believe it was, around that sort of way. So that is, there we go, the crackle effect. And like I say, because I've gone randomly with the brush strokes, it's going to give you like cracks in different directions. But that's the sure way to make that work. Now, the only paint it's not going to work with is any metallic paint because they dry at a slightly different rate. And it's all about the drying rate of the crackle glaze and the paint that you put on top that would give you those. OK, let's pop that aside. I'm running out of space already. That's going to go on top of my cup. OK. Right, you'll notice we, we saw this earlier. And this is basically, and I've already prepped this one, so I didn't want to spend too much time on it. But basically, it is a piece of the good old um, corrugated cardboard. OK, so I've just torn it like so. Now, you can dampen the edge of this to actually then rip um, the, 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 the top coat off. But I, I just use some uh, tweezers and just go in there and just like start to edge it up. And then I just rip, okay, down there. Sometimes this stuff can be actually quite tough. So just going like so. So it just depends. Some of it is more sticky than others, but you, you get the idea. I'm not going to, like I say, demonstrate painting that because we don't want to see any more paint dry. <laughs> We've got Janet. Hello there, Janet. I, I don't, let's have a look. Love that colour. Yeah, that colour. Um, is the multi-service paint from That's Crafty and it's called Ocean. And like I say, it is a really beautiful, beautiful colour. Right, so we have our piece of corrugated cardboard, okay, like so. And then what I've done there, I have just, you can probably see that I've used the, the stencil um, or texture paste from That's Crafty and I've just used a stencil and just gone over the top of that. Um, and then all we need to do is grab some colors so we want that one and then we want that one there because the the idea is i'm looking for something sort of similar to this color which is on our original backing paper okay so here we go i'm just going to grab some of that like so okay probably about that much i would think might be wrong and a little bit of brown, probably a little bit more, okay, let's see, so that's the sort of colour we actually want, is that, so give that a little bit of a mix, yeah, that's not too bad, that's not too bad, let's have a look, just add a little bit more of the brown, and yes, I'm going to grab that into there, okay, shake that on, okay, Let's just give that another quick mix. Okay, there we go. So that's near enough, near enough a sort of colour. So it's almost like um, a, a burnt, sort of like magenta colour. And the two colours there I've used, again from That's Crafty, we've got the multi-surface bright magenta. And I'm not going to tip this one because obviously the lid's not on. That one is chestnut brown for those of you who want that. Right, so I have some water here. So I'm just going to basically wash this over. So re really want to make sure that's pretty much of a liquid. And I'm just going to coat that on there. Okay, not too worried about how accurate that is. Okay, so just pop that on. Make sure you go into all the nooks and crannies. Okay, and it doesn't really matter if you see any of those brush strokes at all. That's um, the beauty of just doing a wash over something. It's just sort of like, the idea is it, it looks like um, one of those old um, walls in sort of like really old houses that are, is it called Watland something. I'm sure somebody could uh, tell us what that is. Um, is it Watland daub walls? It's, oh, I don't know. But basically um, it's sort of like got a plaster, but behind the plaster there's um, sort of like wooden, um, sort of like reinforcements but that's that's the sort of idea i'm just going to quickly blast that okay with the heat tool again we're not going to go completely dry on this one so if you wet it slightly it comes off really easy yes it does indeed belinda hi there laura we we're all in the group um years and years ago a lot of us um where we had to make one 
Christmas card for every week of the year. So yeah, 52 Christmas cards. And that was really real good fun. But that's how a lot of us got to actually know one another really, really, really well. So let's just pop that onto there. Okay, let's just see. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over that. And as you can see where the texture paste is, because that's slightly shinier than the cardboard, that's coming off a little bit easier. So it's giving us that real, sort of like real rustic type finish on it. So let me just grab a little bit of water, okay. Go over that. Okay, there we go. That is going to be it for that. So I'm just going to go back in and just quickly dry some of that. If you want to bring out some of that texture, let's have a look. What's somebody saying here? Um, Cop houses, wattle and daub. Thank you very much, Master. I knew somebody would know out there. I'd completely forgotten. Completely forgotten. And then also, uh, Joan is saying exactly the same. So there we go. Okay, right. Okay, and I'm just going to go back over using that colour just, just to darken like the under part or where the, the corrugated bit is. And the reason I've dried it separately or, um, is because if I had tried to do this bit, okay, dry this bit, then it, it would take forever and ever and ever. So I just dry it like in layers, okay? But you can instantly see there, we've got the outer part that's quite a lot darker. But I'd say the thinner the coats of paint, in theory, the quicker it should dry. Okay, let's just move those out of the way. We've got Chris who has joined us. Um, Let's have a look. Belinda is still here. So there's loads of us in this evening. Okay, let's just go around there. Now, obviously, because this is my very first sort of like live where I'm actually crafting and not just talking about crafting, um, it, we could go over the hour. So just bear that in mind. If you don't want to watch the entire live as such, then it's always going to be there on Crafting Together All Brands. I also put it on to my YouTube channel as well. So if you've never ever visited um, my YouTube channel, then here's a little bit of information about that. Well, whilst that was running, I've had a little bit of a tidy up and I'm still drying. Okay, so I'm still here. I'm still here. Right. Okay, so we have that. Now I'm just going to use um, the gesso again. Okay, this time I'm going to use it in a slightly different way. I'm, I'm, I'm even going to use yet another brush. I'm, I'm splashing out tonight. Right, so I'm just going to pop that onto our mat. Okay, just there. And I'm literally just going to very very lightly just brush over where the corrugated bit is just like so okay there we go and just on that side as well so it just really accentuates all of those high points on the corrugated card there we go let's have a look we've got good goodness me we've got good morning from New Zealand good morning well, I'm glad you could join us. We've got somebody from Australia. We've got somebody from New Zealand. Absolutely wonderful to have you all on board. Um, I, I suppose I better introduce myself to those of you who, who don't know me. Um, I'm a I'm a UK crafter. Um, I have been crafting for more. Oh, um, well, 
I was going to say when I was a, a little boy, but professionally I've been crafting for at least about 16 years. Okay, let's have a look. There we go. So there is our beautiful light like, texture going on there. Hopefully this bit is dry. There's a little a couple of bits there. I'm just going to dab those off. Okay, I'm not too too worried about creating that. But let's just, we really want to dry this before we put that on. Boom, 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 there we go. Okay, right, we're just going to add a little bit of splatters. I'm getting really messy this evening. Uh, a lot of you probably uh, think that I have um, Teflon, Teflon hands. Or is it, is it Teflon? I can't remember, the non-stick one, anyway. Um, right, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to spray some water into my lid there. Okay, and we're just going to, okay, basically just create a really runny uh, paint because we're going to do a little bit of flicking. Okay, so just to age it a little bit more. So a couple of little old splats on there. And this particular paint is, again, from what, um, that's crafty. It is actually one of their metallic paints. I really love this one. It's, it's all like a gold, um, what's, that, what's it actually called? It's actually called a bronze. <laughs> <laughs> there we go it's actually called bronze so I'm just flicking that one I know some people have a cocktail stick and run it over the back of that do you know what I am um, a messy crafter um, on the quiet so there we go so again let's just show you what that looks like so it's looking pretty splattery pretty aged okay so let's just pour that in there I did take the water out of there by the way and just there we go, pop that over there. Right, let's have a little bit of a tidy as we go. I do try. So again, we're just going to hopefully dry some of those splats. So let's have a look. We've got Julia. So pleased to have fallen through this rabbit hole. New channel to me. Oh, absolutely fantastic, um, Julia. Just so glad that you actually found us. There's so much inspiration not only on the Facebook Lives on this group, but also all the fantastic crafters who every single day um, help inspire loads of us by posting their beautiful projects that they make. So just have a scroll through the pages. Seriously, you will not be disappointed. Let's have a look. Okay, let's just keep them going, see if they're dry, should be, yeah, okay, that is dry. So we're now going to put this diagonal panel actually on top, like so, okay. So obviously it is oversized at the moment, so I'm going to glue from there-ish and go up that way. I'm going to use some of the That's Crafty glue, okay, obviously, um, let's have a look. I knew that was going to happen. I always have a pin handy, okay, because uh, what I normally tend to do is leave these upside down and then that way you know they're not going to block up. Okay, there we go. So we, we're good to go. Okay, so just go all the way with your glue. Spread around with your fingers if you'd so wish. Entirely up to you. And again, we're just going to, did I put it that way? I think it was that way last time. We're just going to stick that down there pull it around there you can have a little bit of a, a jiggle around with that there okay just push that down i'm going to bring in my cutting mat again as i'd say i always think that it does tend to um, blunt the blades if you're going to be using it directly onto your glass mat so we're just going to go around there like so and we have what is our little canvas? Right, so we're now going to bring a couple of these elements together. So one element that you haven't seen, and that's actually the waste product from this um, particular, and I think these are called chunkies from That's Crafty. Like I said, they're little faux um, canvases type thing. Okay, you get, that is the waste. Now you'll see what I've done there, I have just, used exactly the same technique as I did in the large one. I've used the crackle glaze on there um, and underneath it was black paint. Then on top I've gone for a cream. So we're just going to stick this one 
on here. Okay, so it's sort of like that. So the idea is that this is actually going to be raised. So this is the bit that's going to do the the raising. Okay, as such. Like so. So obviously, if you've got a piece of cardboard, then you can use that. I've just used a piece of MDF. Okay. Now I did want to stick that to that, but I think that's probably going to be a little bit tricky. I don't think it's going to stick quick enough for my liking, but let's give it let's give it a go. So it may do. It may do. If we just quickly just go around on majority of the tabs, okay, then that should stick. Hot glue is good. Um, I know it's a it's a time saver. I'm not a great fan of it to be honest with you because if you do want your um, projects to last any time at all you probably found out that the hot glue guns you know the glue does dry out on them after a while okay so I just go for the good old, good old wet glue I don't think you can really go far wrong where that's concerned so let's just pop that like so and move our big piece out of the way and I'm just going to see if I can line this up like so. Okay, and we're just about clear. We go round. Okay, I think that's probably going to stick actually. So if we work on top of it and squash it down, then we should be okay. Right. So earlier on, we did this one here, which was the the texture cog. We got Simon. Hi there, Simon. Simon has joined us. We got Bernie. I uh, see. Uh, Glue bottles um, and flies. I yell at them both. Come out, you stupid thing, and go away. Neither <laughs> can respond, but makes me feel better. I know exactly what you mean. So that is the, um, the texture we've created. Again, I'm not going to bore you too much with um, how I painted that. I'm just going to tell you that I used the, um, the metallic bronze okay, as an undercoat. And then I used on top of that a watered down um, multi-surface paint, the ocean one, okay. And then I just splodged that on top um, and then just wiped it back. That's going to give you that type of effect, okay. So, you know, I'm sure you've all seen all different types of rust effects before. Just have a go. Like I said, I'm not going to bore you too much with how I've done that. So I've got one cog at the top there. I've also got another large one here. Okay, all from that sheet from That's Crafty. So many different elements within that one sheet. Let's see if this is now dried. Yeah, do you know what? That, I think that is near enough dry. So what I'm going to do, let's have a look. Did I get that spot on? Maybe not. Let's just give it a couple more minutes underneath. Okay, like so. Ooh, then, there, then, it, then it all falls off. Oh, there's me trying to line it up perfectly. Maybe I should just lift as it was. Let's just leave that on there. I'm just going to try to roughly guess where these are going to go. So I want them hanging off the canvas just a little bit. So one on the top, one on the bottom. And it's all about just basically spacing things out. So it's all like balanced, if, if that makes sense. What I tend to do, I've got loads of elements and I put them all together. Then I can move them around. I, I never ever stick anything together and then when I'm happy with everything, then it's just um, a case of I take a picture of it and then I'm good to go. Let's just have a quick look at the comments. Um, I know it takes a long time to dry, but I always use a glue gel. Yep, to attach tricky uh, surfaces. First met you when I started getting into crafting, a craft workshop where we made and decorated boxes. Um, I remember the day and venue so well. Absolutely, so do I, Blinda. It was um, an amazing, an amazing day. Two beautiful projects as well. Um, and there was quite a lot packed into both the projects from what I can remember. Well, that's got to be dry now. Um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it work. Right, let's just pop that over there. So we're going to apply some more glue to this piece here. Okay. Well, there we go. Okay, pop that up, pop that over here. I'm just going to see if I can fiddle around until I'm happy with the placement, which is about there. Okay, and again, we're just going to just press that down. 
Because that piece of MDF underneath there is actually thicker than the cardboard, then I can just slot things under, you see. Sometimes it's easier to do it that way. So I'm just going to pop these here. Now we've got two cogs. I always go, I don't know about you guys, but when I look at things, I think this one looks heavier, it should be at the bottom. That's that's how my brain works. Not that I'm saying I'm right, but that's that's how I normally sort of like try to space things out. So again, just pop the the glue onto there and we're just going to tuck that under okay don't worry about it. if the glue does ooze out you can just take that off i'm just going to use a wet wipe okay like so don't know whether that's going to stick or not maybe let's have a look maybe i'm going to go for a bit of um silicon glue under there as well that will probably that will probably do if you do use silicon glue or indeed glue gel like Belinda does, then what I'd suggest is just give it a little bit of a twist and then you'll probably find that it's going to glue better. Okay, so again, just go off there. And now, if anyone um, does want to sort of leave the live, please um, feel free to go and, you know, have a cuppa, enjoy the rest of your evening. These lives are always um, catalogued away in the crafting together with all brands page so if you can't watch everything now please don't worry um, just like I say go and enjoy your evening so I'm going to tuck this one in here okay as far as we can go like so okay and just press that down Let's just use a pencil I think to just there we go Okay, so it's all coming together in a roundabout way. We have our little rabbit here. This is one I did earlier. So again, this is on to just a piece of MDF. And then we're just going to, again, cut this off. Okay, hopefully this should come together, I say pretty quickly once we get to this stage. Okay. Right, so we have our little rabbit here. Let's bring our canvas in. We we'll try to start to build it up. I've just got some pieces of cardboard here. Okay, I'm just going to use a little bit of silicon glue because I think it's just for speed. Okay, just give that a little bit of a twist just there. Okay, and also just there. All right, and then we have a larger one for the middle. Okay, so again, just pop that there. Is that going to grab? I think it will. Okay, so we have three little rabbits I want to put in place. We've got the gentleman, we've got the lady rabbits just there, and we've got this one up there like so. So I'm just going to put those at slightly jaunty angles. Obviously, if you're using um, a glue gel or a silicon, you are going to have a little bit of time just to spin those round where you want them to be okay so let's just pop that there i'm just going to use the overhead camera just to see if i've sort of like popped those about right okay and then in the middle like so and you can see with this one i've also used that crackle effect so as you can see what's happened with the colors we've gone for this dark color on the outside it's then repeated on this stripe going across then we've got the turquoise, that's just basically to make everything um, pop a little bit. And then again, we've replicated the cream colour that's on here, which is on here. And again, it's just to like really space between everything. Okay, right now we've got to that stage. And like I said, I'm just going to have a look at the overhead camera. Everything is sort of like aligned quite nicely. Um, we've then got some other casts that um, I've done. Now this one is, um, you can't see it at the moment, so I'm just going to pop that aside. Okay, just bear with me one moment. I'm just going to move this over here. Okay, and then we'll see if we can just concentrate a little bit on these ones here. Right, so these are from the, I do believe it's the Avery um, collection. Okay, so you will notice there is some corn flour on there that does come off by the way i'm just going to use a green gilding wax this is from uh, finnebear okay this one is called mint sparkle okay 
probably available on the That's Crafty website. So I'm just going to just go over on just the leaves, okay, just to add, and it's just a hint of colour this mint, okay, it's not too strong, it's actually quite a nice colour, but just on there, okay. So again, just go around, okay, so. Now with gilding wax, um, the idea is to put it on your finger, but not to like press it too much. So almost your the tip of your finger isn't actually touching, it's all like just sloping off. And then you'll find that you get a nice coverage without too many like real like splodgy areas, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Judith loving the bunnies, aren't they cute? They are the most amazing little rabbits and you get loads of them as well. There's different sheets available on the That's Crafty's um, website. You can get loads of little images like the ones I've used here. You've then got um, ones, I think there's two images on an A4 sheet, so they're really substantial. Um, but they are just really, really quite quirky and, and fun to work with. So just gone there, and you can see there, you've just got like, it's, it's a hint of green, so it's not overly green. Now the other colour um, that I also love from this particular range is this one here, which is the um, Indian Pink. Again, it's another one of the waxes um, from Prima uh, and Finnebear. Now, you will, okay, love <laughs> the smell of these. Hmm. Absolutely, they are absolutely gorgeous, they really are. But um, in all seriousness, they, they, they are really beautiful, beautiful um, waxes. So um, they're not overly soft, in actual fact. I do believe now they, they come in tubes. I am not really a fan of the tubes, I'll be honest with you. But that is just the way that they have decided to sell them. So you can see now we have got, and you can't really see this, this here probably because of the light. So I'm just going to dim that light does that make any difference no not at all um you just got a hint of the red on this again we're just trying to pick up on that original like brownie red background okay so just going to go round with that one okay so there we go well, let's just have a, a quick time check oh it's eight o'clock so like i say don't think you have to stay for the the whole duration because um Hopefully, we should get it finished within the next, I'm going to say 20 minutes, okay? And I, I haven't forgotten about giving you the link, by the way, for the backing papers, but I will do that before the very, very end. Right, let's have a look. Does that have, yes, it does have like an orangey smell, and it is, yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> okay, right, so bringing our piece back in, okay? I'm just going to stick one coming down from this way okay so it's like just tucked in behind there again I am going to use um, some silicon glue just just for speed really okay so I just want it tucked in so you don't see the beginning of the branch and it's just sort of trailing it just brings a little bit of nature into this because there's a lot of it there that is sort of like a little bit industrial with all the cogs and then you've got the rabbits as well so it's just like just changing the subject matter a little bit on there. And again, I'm just going to tuck that just so it's behind there. Okay, like so. Right. So it's taking shape. Now, as well as the large cogs, there's also loads of tiny ones as well on the That's Crafty's um, sheets there. Okay. So let's just pop those. Now I'm going to hang these over the edge. We just want little bit of interest and that's what um, I love about 3D crafting. Um, you can add some amazing depth to your project and relatively simply when you're using like different layers and obviously when you're using the molds as well. So let's just pop that one there. Right let's have a look. Now this is another sheet let me just bring this one in as well. Okay this is this is amazing. You have six clock faces on here and you also have all of the little hands on there so what I've done I've just popped all of those out and I have made um, basically I, I doubled it up to be honest with you 
so it's a little bit thick because this is one I want over the edge, okay? And then surprise, surprise, on one of Finnebear's moulds, which is this one here, one that I said looks like the Egyptian ones, you've got these like clock mechanisms, you know, the insides of clocks there. So I've cast that one and just purely by coincidence, that actually fits perfectly in the middle of that. I quite like that. Okay, so I'm just going to tuck that one inside there. And again, I'm just going to hang that over the edge. And you can see here now we're just building all of those layers together. So again, let's just pop that on there. Okay, and just a couple of bits where the clock is itself. Make sure we just have number 12 pointing upwards. We're just going to tuck it very slightly behind that one there. Okay, just press that. Now I did have somewhere, you also get, like I say, the clock hands. Now, if anyone has done any sort of crafting for where it comes to clocks, um, they always say, make sure that um, your clock is smiling. So I've set it and that's sort of like, um, I think it's 10 past 10. I think that's the sort of, will give you that smiling look to your clock. But if you do want it to look a little bit grumpy, then just obviously point it the other way <laughs> entirely up to you. So let's just pop that on with some glue. Okay, and I'm just gonna pop that in the center there. Just wiggle that around a little bit. Okay, right, so we, we are getting there. We are getting there. Now we have this one here, which is the, um, the frame that I showed you um, first off. Okay, that is from, let me just grab it, that's from this mould here. Like I said, I'm not sure if all of the moulds are available on That's Crafty, but please go over and check their website. But this is basically this one here without the centrepiece in. Okay, and again, I just cast this, so I'm just going to stick that one down. Okay, and that's just to really frame our little bunny in the middle there okay just wiggle that around and then we've got some other little cogs so again it's all about adding dimension so just quickly I'm just going to pop that one on top of there so it's just going over that way and again balancing it up the top again likewise we're going to do the same just there so let's just tuck that one into there so, right, how's it looking? It's looking um, quite busy, I'll be honest with you, but that's the sort of like look I'm after. We've got some of these, okay. So we've got the words dreams, time, and story. This is a stencil that's uh, from That's Crafty. So let's have a look. We've got maybe story, time, and then dreams down there. I think that's how I'm gonna do it, actually story time and dreams okay let's again just pop this on here okay pop that down let's see if we can use the overhead camera there just to make sure that that is there we've got the dreams one maybe i want to move that there let's have a look so we've got dreams going on down there so i'm just literally just trying to see where I need the glue okay so again just pull that over there just lift it up a little bit okay so I've used the um, the texture paste from that's crafty to create that and that shows nicely then we've got time sitting there but I'm not sure I'm going to put the time quite yet okay because we've just got some other little bits of play pieces to actually just go over with some wax. So let me just grab all of those pieces like so. I do have quite a lot of those actually. So let's have a look. Okay, right. Let's just grab, will we be using this one? Let's just have a look what the Firebird looks like. Again, it's got that beautiful smell to it. I'm just going to, if you're not really sure of the colour of anything, then just go on to the back. Mm, is that going to work? I'm not too sure, to be honest with you. 
Ooh, okay. I'm not. I'm not convinced. So I'm just gonna let's have a look. Just go. Just go on to this one. I do have another colour in reserve, just in case. But I think that's just bringing another colour that we don't really need into the equation. So, whoops. Let's just yeah throw that one about a bit. Um, <laughs> Right, so what I'm going to use now is my good old trusty um, dry brushing brush. Okay, sounds funny that does, but I use this one purely for dry brushing. Um, if nobody knows what dry brushing is, okay, um, then have a look on my YouTube channel. Um, there's a video I've got on there and it just explains um, sort of like in quite a bit of detail how to achieve the best um, sort of like dry brushing effect. So I'm just going to pop that on to there. Okay, so this is the metallic paint. This is the, the bronze. And then I'm just going to dry brush over the top of this. And this is just going to accentuate all of the high points, okay, on top of our casts. Now, I know some of you do prefer to use resin. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so resin works really, really well. The only thing with resin is, you know, you do most of the time have to prime it okay before you can put any paint on so just do bear that in mind and that's one of the reasons why i use um, clay okay so again just keep on just lightly going over the top of the clay there obviously making sure the clay is completely dry okay so there we go one two I think we're going to use those wings as well. I'm just going to go over with a, a damp cloth because I say this one has actually got a little bit of cornflour on. You can just get that off, okay? So just don't go too wild, okay? Let's just let those ones dry. I'm just going to go back onto this one here. I'll just show this one up to the camera. So literally just, just going over with just the right amount of paint just really does lift all of that amazing detail. There we go, as you can see. Okay, right, so we have that. Let's go for a little bit more of the paint. Now I know when people do dry brushing, they have um, basically cloth to wipe it off. I don't tend to, I think that after time, you're gonna get used to the dry brushing and you probably won't need to either. Like I say, have a look on my YouTube channel for that. Okay, right, and this one here. So literally, I think we're going to be about 10 minutes, and then I will give you the details of those um, backing papers. Okay, I've designed two of them, and they're all using copyright-free images, so you're totally free to use them in any of your crafting projects. Anything I'm going to say is, you know, don't just print them out and just sell the images by themselves. You know, get creative with them, but any projects that you have, then yes, you can be selling those. Okay, so again, just pop that over there. So I do apologise for this live going on a little bit longer. Okay, have to watch um, the rest again. Um, lads in bed. Oh, good night then, Joan. You take care, and like I say, Yep, the live is here for you whenever you are free to watch. So let's have a look. We're we getting there. Okay, I've just got a couple of these. But you can see once you've actually got all of your clay pieces together, it doesn't take long then just to age them. You know, if you wanted to, you could then go over with like the colour um, that is the ocean, that is that sort of like turquoise, like verdigris type colour. You could go over um, these with that as well, just to add another colour. But because, you know, I'm obviously conscious of time, maybe this is a little bit of an ambitious um, project to be going on with. But there we go, that's what it's all about. Crafting is fun, and it's all about um, just sharing sort of like ideas with people. And, you know, I think as crafters, we all love to like bounce ideas off one another as well. So, like I say, that's. That's what you'll do it for. It's a very relaxing thing, as I'm sure all of you will agree. So there we go. I'm just going to go around there. Have we got any other pieces that I've missed? Possibly not. Okay, let's just go back in there. Just add a little bit around there. 
Okay, I've got a little tiny cog. Let's have a look. I'm just going to go a little bit heavier on that because I do really want that one to stand out as it's only tiny. And then we've got this one here, which again is one of those smaller versions of the workings of the inside of a little clock there. Okay, so there we go. Right, like I say, if you wanted to, you could go in there with another colour. I'm going to leave it at that. We're going to position all of that. And then, okay, with a bit of luck, we should then be getting on to what we're probably all really here for. And that's the free backing papers, which is... Um, something that I want to share. So let's just move this back in, move this up away. Okay, right, so let's just get rid of that paint there. Okay, and then we're just going to use some silicon glue again. We're just going to start trying to balance everything out. Now I do want the, the little key just about there, okay, just so it stands out. We've got two wings, one either side of it. Okay, again, probably want that one just hanging over the edge because I do like to create lots of dimension like I said it's all about the layers so let's just pop that one there okay and uh, the key can then sit there as well okay let's pop that one there and then we have the other little wing I think which, which film was it? It was Harry Potter, I do believe. Wasn't it? it was Harry Potter that had the flying keys. Do you know, I'm, I'm not actually a Harry Potter fan, I've got to admit, but my sons absolutely love it. There we go. So that's the little key just up there. Um, we've got the big wings. Now, I wanted those like tucked inside there, but mm, let's have a look, see if they're going to go. But that one will go that side, but will this one? Mm, okay, I, want, yeah, I wanted them at that angle for some reason. That's it. <coughs> okay. So let's just pop that there. Okay, I'm just going to lift that up slightly. Just want to tuck it round. <coughs> this side <coughs> I do apologize I'm coughing away here okay so let's just again tuck that inside there just use the overhead camera again just to center that <coughs> let's just have a drink Okay, right. Drink had. <laughs> Let's pop these on. I love, if you're going to get any mould at all from the, the Prima range, it's got to be this one here with these beautiful um, swirls because you can like um, add them all together and create frames. A really, really nice, nice one to, to go with. So let's just pop that on there. Like I say, if you're at home, you're going to be taking your time. But I just want to that one on there so these rabbits they look really grand anyway I have my backup silicon glue so let's just use that one. <coughs> oh dear apologies again that cough is not going away okay let's just pop that one there <coughs> right we have the key where is the key gonna go or is is the key gonna go anywhere let's have a look Mm -hmm. let's, again, let's have a look. Any suggestions where the key can go? <coughs> I'm, I'm going to leave that for the moment. I'm going to I'm going to wait to see if anyone suggests where the key can go, and then we can possibly pop that exactly where we want them. So I'm just going to pop that one up there. Have the cogs actually going over uh, the top of each other. Let's have a look. Okay, has anyone said where where the key can go? Not yet. So let's just pop the little timepiece bit there. We're going to stick that on top. I'll say it's all about layering. Do we need some more glue? Yes, we do. OK. 
Okay, let's just pop that in. Okay, just twist that around like so. Okay, do we know where it's going? Well, I'm back. My phone died. How rude. Right, where are the rabbit rice papers from, please? Right, the rabbit rice papers, that's, that's difficult to say, isn't it? Rabbit rice papers. The rabbit rice papers, Valerie, are from That's Crafty. Um, we'll, we'll pop over to their website in a moment. Right, we're not always going to tell where to put the, the key. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tuck the key right down there. Okay, let's have a look. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're back, Laura. Um, hopefully all the paint is dried. We're near enough, we're near enough finished. I'm going to pop, there we go, the keyhole just down there. Um, let's have a look. I'm just going to pop the little one just there. And again, I just like to over overlap things. We have this one here, which is a fun little piece. It's like a little wind-up key. I um, really like that one. Let's say off the site of, uh, let's have a look. Oh, is that off the side of the clock? Off the side of the clock? For this one, you mean? Yes, that's where this one's going to go. Um, <clears throat> do we want it there or do we want it underneath? May maybe there. I don't know. Let's have a look. Should we, should we put it there? Hmm. There's so many, so many keys. Um, left hand side. Uh, <laughs> is that where we put it? Wasn't it, Louise? Louise says, it's looking gorgeous. Would look amazing on my craft room wall. Is, is that the case? When's it your birthday, Laura? Not yet. I know that. <laughs> right. Do you know, I, I was going to put this on somewhere really clever and it just hasn't worked, does it, really? Um, let's have a look. Dare I stick it, like, off the... Oh, dear. Decisions, decisions, hey? Or shall we have it just there? Do you know what? I, I want it near the clock. It's like July. Thanks for that. Under under the clock. It's under the clock. Do you think? I'm going to put it there, Louisa, okay? I should put it there and we'll, we'll see what it looks like. So it's, it's hovering over the edge. I don't know if it's going to stick, admittedly. But let's have a look. I'm sort of thinking, I'm sort of thinking there. Let's just move it over a little bit. Okay, right. It's, go, it's going there. Okay, I'm just going to put a large amount of the silicon glue. We're just going to pop that there, like so. All right. I'm going to get the old tweezers out. Oh dear, it's all going pear shaped. Pop the tweezers in. Obviously, when you're at home, you know, I would normally support that. Okay. And we've just got the one for the time. The time, I think, I think it's going to go, it's going to go there. And then just move those down just a tad. That's the great thing with the glue because you can keep on moving it down. I'm going to move it over a little bit as well. And I'm just going to, I don't want to really cover up too much of that gorgeous colour either. I'm really conscious that I don't want to do that. So let's have a look. Um, let's have a little bit more glue just there. Okay. So we are nearly done. Nearly done. I do apologise. There we go. Okay. Give that a little bit of a push down there. Whew. Okay. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. So... Um, I don't think, let's have a look, do I have a white sheet of paper? I have a white sheet of paper. I'm just going to um, grab a white sheet of paper, okay? I'll let you guys um, have a look at these um, free papers. So here are the, the papers that I'm going to be offering you um, to this evening. Okay, there's two of them. I've done a London theme one and I've also done like a classical theme one. These are going to be available to download for free. They come in a PDF format. So all you'll need there is basically Adobe Acrobat Reader, okay, to actually um, enable you to um, open those up on your own computer. Then you can just print out as many as you like. Okay, so there are the papers. And this is where the link all comes in. Okay, so if you send me an email, it's mixedmediaartsandcrafts at hotmail.com. Or if it's easier for you to do so, send me a message in Messenger. Okay, and then you can claim your free downloads. Okay, so there is the London one. So you can see there that St. Thomas's Hospital in the back. All of the images that I've actually used are completely copyright free. So like I say, as long as you don't actually sell um, the sheets, then I'm quite happy for you to use them. Right, so 
I know somebody who actually has used them. And that's um, my very good friend, uh, Samantha. So what Sam has done here, as you can see, this is a magnificent piece, it really, really is. Um, she's actually created a top hat. Now I do believe, um, Sam, that you did this, was it in a, a, a pretty gets gritty live or, or was it for someone else? I can't remember. Please pop on there um, and have a look how Sam actually created this one. What Sam did, she actually printed it out on rice paper. Now, rice paper is available. Plain sheets of rice paper are available from thatscrafty.co.uk. You can see the London one that Sam has actually used here. And um, she just printed it onto blank rice paper. And it just works so, so well for a steampunk theme. But let's have a closer look at Sam's piece. And wow, look at this. The feathers are absolutely amazing. And all of those beautiful cogs and the way she's rusted them, but it just works so, so well. And um, you just can't go wrong, really, can you? When you start off with um, a beautiful paper, it almost sets the theme for the rest of your project. But like I say, that um, is how to get those um, two PDF files from me. So it was just a case of... Um, Going back, okay, and let me just uh, bring that back again. So there, let's just see, I'm, I'm trying to bring up the papers again. So can we actually get that? Here we go. Right, that's the one. So these are the papers, like I say, this will give the information, okay. I love the papers, says Louisa. Thank you so, so much. So you've got the London one, you've got the classical one. Like I say, you will need um, Adobe Reader. In the actual documents that you can download, there is a README file that will just give you a few of the um, instructions on what you can and can't do with them. And also it will give you a link on how to download Adobe Reader if you haven't already got it on your computer. There are other programs that will open a PDF document, but it's just send an email to mixedmediaartsandcrafts at hotmail.com or send a message in Messenger to myself and then I will sort out that link and send it to you. So let's have a look. The Gothic paper is begging for the asteroid. Yes, it is, isn't it? Gosh, yes. That would be absolutely amazing. Um, and like I say, I would absolutely love to see all of your projects, okay, that you actually make using those papers. So that's that. Here's uh, my project for this evening, all um, finished. So let's just bring the lights in a little bit on it. Whoa, there we go. So you can see everything has um, been used there. So we started off with our backing papers, then all of the different layers to bring everything to life. Now, if you've never been to um, the That's Crafty web page, then please do take a look. There's some really fantastic stuff on there. Okay, really easy to navigate. That's what I love about websites, okay, or, or certain websites. And you can put in like, let's have a look, ITD. Let's see what ITD collection brings up for us. There we go. And there are all of the amazing rice papers. So you can scroll through there. Let's see if we can actually find the, there's, um, can we find the rabbit ones there? There we go. There's the rabbit ones. Okay, so. If we hover over the rabbits, there's the larger ones I was telling you about, okay. Um, and there's the small ones. Let's take a closer look at the small ones. So let's just zoom in there. Hopefully we can zoom in. Let's have a look. There we go. So there are all of those beautiful rabbits. You're going to get nine in total on that particular sheet. So well worth going over to the That's Crafty website and taking a closer look look okay so that is the that's crafty's um, website loads of products on there really um, great delivery um, a quick delivery service and i do believe you only have to spend 20 pounds to actually get free delivery which is absolutely fantastic whilst um, we're there let's just take a look at my youtube channel okay <laughs> which is this one here you've got the information anyway and if you go on to there, you can um, have a look at all of the videos I've mentioned. So you've got the dry brushing one. You've got the one from the other week, which is talking all about um, clay. Um, but please watch there. If you haven't done so already, uh, click on that subscribe button as well. 
Right, I do believe, let's have a look, that um, I'm back. Right, so I hope you have enjoyed um, this evening's live. Um, let's just take a quick look at the time. Oh, it's about half past eight. So still plenty of the evening to enjoy. So a very big thank you to all of you who um, have spared their time. Let's just have a look. Um, Fiona says, thank you, um, beautiful project. Thank you so much. Ian says, motor and no motor. Um, you're more than welcome, uh, Sam. Thank you very much for um, sharing um, your beautiful project that you made with the, uh, the rice paper that I designed. Remember, Sam is going to be on here. Well, not on here as such, but she's going to be on Crafting Together with All Brands page on Friday at the early time of six o'clock. Normally it's a seven o'clock, but um, Sam's doing a live uh, six o'clock. I do believe it's Dolly Dimples. Um, Alison says, thank you so much. Laura, awesome live, even if I was late and and uh, and uh, disappeared. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I won't, I won't count that against you. Don't worry, uh, <laughs> Laura. Uh, Louisa says a fabulous project. Thank you so much, Julia. Um, it's truly fabulous. Thank you so much for sharing. Thanks so much, Anthony. Great live. Loads of tips and advice. Oh, and loyalty points. Not loyalty points for me, but yes, um, Sam's actually mentioned the fact that you do get loyalty points when you go on the That's Crafty website. Absolutely, Liz. Liz, glad you hung around for the entire life. Thank you so so much. Hope you're keeping uh, well, Louisa. Thank you. For sharing a fabulous project says Belinda uh, thank you so much for sharing with us and sharing your design papers with us bless you that's absolute pleasure um, great project first time I've watched you Valerie um, thank you so much um, Janet Franklin I, I'm not gonna even try to pronounce your surname so I do apologize but thank you and um, Janet is from Denmark and Sam says thank you lovely talk soon absolutely we will and um, I'm sure most of you can realize um, I can talk for England um, right I'm gonna go back to um, my desk setting because I'm now gonna um, leave you guys to it thank you so so much for watching and <clears throat> um, hopefully I've inspired you a little bit and like I say head on over to that crafty website but until then um like i say take care and have a crafty tomorrow and um rest of the week see you real soon thanks again so so much for watching <laughs>